All right, here we are on number five. As usual, if I have any mistakes, I'll put in the description below or a pinned comment. So consider this differential equation, blah. Let y of x be a particular solution here. Functions define a portion of the slope field for the differential equation given below. Sketch the solution curve through this point. So just kind of just sketch through the curve. I'll put it in red so you guys can see my answer a little bit better. It probably looks something like that. We'll just, just connect the dots a little bit. Something like that would be good. It doesn't have to be super exact. Just sort of, you're kind of connecting the slope of the lines there. Write an equation for the tangent line of the solution curve in part A to the point one two. Use the equation approximate to approximate this. Equation of tangent line, I always do the same thing. Y minus Y zero is M, X minus X zero. In this case, you already know that it's um, the X and the Y coordinate. That's the point. And so the M is the DY DX at that point. So let's find that derivative. So here we would have to look at this equation here. So uh, at that point, so at point one, two, it would be one half sine pi over two times one. And then the y value is two, square root of two plus seven. And so sine of pi over two is just one times uh, square root of nine, which is three. So that's three halves. So this is gonna be three halves. So then you're gonna say y minus two is equal to three halves x minus one. And if you wanna rearrange it, I don't distribute anything. I would just leave it like this. And that makes the math easier for the next part anyway to leave it factor like that. It's totally fine to leave it like that. You do not have to distribute and put it in slope intercept form. And then when x is 0 0.8, we would say y is 3 halves 0 0.8 minus 1 plus 2. That's 3 halves times negative 0 0.2 plus 2. That's negative 0 0.3 plus 2, which is 1.7. It is known that the second derivative is greater than zero in this interval. Is this approximation in part B an overestimate or an underestimate? Give it a reason for your answer. So second derivative positive means it's concave down. That means if I use a tangent line approximation, right, I'm going to underestimate the value here. I think that's true even if it's um, like this way. Even if, it doesn't matter the direction of the concavity or if it's increasing or decreasing. All that matters is the concavity. Because it is concave up, And I would note the concave means the second derivative is greater than zero. Just make that connection. The tangent line is an underestimate. Well, let me see. We're going to the, yeah, it's always an under. The tangent line's always underneath the curve, underestimate, right? You can see in both of those scenarios, if it's concave up, the tangent line is always underneath the curve, which means the y value is always gonna underestimate the value there. Use separation of variables to find the particular solution to this differential equation with this. So uh, I always put it first, I put the dx up. So dy, 1 half sine pi over 2x, square root of y plus 7 dx. And then I'm just going to bring this to the other side. dy over square root of y plus 7 equals 1 half sine pi over 2x dx. And then we integrate both sides. This side, I'm gonna write as integral of y plus seven to the negative one half dy. So do the left integral. That's just gonna be, I mean, you can do a u sub, but like the du is basically the same. So we're just gonna do power rule. So that's y plus seven to the positive one half divided by positive one half, which is just two root y plus seven. Let's do the right integral here. Uh, you can do a u substitution if you want, or if you just kind of like fast at it a little bit, you just know that I have to do one over two, I have to multiply by two over pi, I have to do cosine, but I have to put a negative sign because the derivative cosine is um, negative sign, right? So there's a negative sign there. And then when I take the derivative of this, a pi over two pops out. That's why I put a two over pi to cancel that out. And then that's it, and then plus c. So this would be negative one over pi cosine pi over two x plus c. Now I always put the plus c on with the x side, even though both sides technically have a plus c, but you can just lump all the constant over to one side. So then we have this. We're gonna divide by two. 
c is an arbitrary constant. So when I divide that by two, it's just whatever. And then I square both sides. Don't forget, I'm squaring the whole thing, right? So not just this guy, squaring the whole thing, and then I'm subtracting seven. Now, what do I have to do is I have to use the initial condition f of one equals two to find this value of c. So when x is one, y is two, basically. I did that right? f of one is two, yeah, x is one, y is two. So that means two equals negative one over two pi cosine, cos, uh, cosine of pi over two plus c squared minus seven. Um, so this is going to be um, two is equal, cosine of pi over two is just a zero. So that's c squared minus seven. So uh, nine equals c squared. So c is gonna equal three. Now here I wanna double check I'm pretty sure it's C or negative, it's positive three or negative three, technically, when I did it all like this. Had you solved it, maybe plugging into this, you would have found that it's definitely positive three. Why is it positive three? Because I know when I, um, I know the Y value, like all, I know this square root has to be positive. If I plug in negative three into here, this thing, even when I plug in one, like it's gonna be negative three. So I, I just know it's, so in order to find the positive three, it might've been easier to plug in the initial condition here instead, but it's not negative three, it's definitely positive three. Um, so then your answer is y equals negative one over two pi cosine pi over two x plus three squared minus seven. It does matter if you pick positive or negative three. You cannot put negative three because one of the things um, you may not remember from your algebra, but when I square things, I can get redundant, uh, I can get extraneous solutions. So when I squared this, I lost some of the sign information. So that's why it would probably would have been better if I had plugged into here. And if you notice here, this is gonna be the square root of nine equals negative one, well, this is gonna be zero plus C. And you see directly that C has to be positive three. It cannot be negative three because the square root of nine is always positive three, not negative three. Now, does it have to be positive square root? It does have to be positive square root because this thing is, yeah, I think, I. so I don't think there's a way you could justify it's negative three.